Hello, and welcome to The Relevance of Now with William Linville. My name is Michael Connell, and today's topic is facing your inner demons. And William, when you refer to inner demons, what are you referring to? Because demon sounds much more than fears or judgments. Yeah, when I look at the inner demons, this is what I see, this is what I look at. All these parts of yourself, very, they're kind of like um, areas in your mind, in your body, where there's like a deep, hollow well of heaviness, darkness, if you want to call it that. And I say darkness, not as a, not judging it, but it's like a dark thought, right? Like all these different voids within yourself. So it brings us back to right here, right now. Let's all just take a breath for a moment. When we look at inner demons, I want you to ask yourself right now, to the best of your ability, very honestly, through the highest of integrity within yourself, what makes you do what you do when you do it? What makes you act, react to any and every situation, scenario within and through your day to day life stream? What makes you crave things that may not be all that beneficial for yourself? And it's kind of like making slash controlling, but I do want to go further into making you. Like you're its servant, whether it's to eat this way, eat that way, drink this, smoke that. I mean, what is really in control that's the underlying force, the underlying current about what you do when you do it and why you do it? Now, we go there, and then we also go into, huh, I wonder why I have these thoughts. It's like a beloved Sananda who shared, a thought is only a thought. And everyone on this planet, one way, shape, or the other, has had a murderous thought. Whether you want to admit it to yourself or not, that's, that's your business. But they're all thoughts that I always look at where are they coming from. I always look at, okay, a thought is a thought is a thought. It's part of the beauty of being pure consciousness. It's part of the beauty of having a consciousness. When you're in traffic, you're getting all worked up. Why are you getting worked up? What are you getting worked up about? They're all thought forms. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But still, it comes back to what is driving it. And that's when we get into your inner demons, the parts of yourself that are controlling you, things that you've assumed to be normal, assumed to be, well, you know, it's just me. Well, I would have, could have, should have. Well, I shouldn't think this way, perceive this way, or feel that way. These are inner demon levels that continue to arise for you when you're being let go of a job. What are you really feeling and what thought forms are coming to mind as you're in that position, rather than, all right, great, man, namaste, have a class, and I welcome in, because, I mean, literally, you're giving being let go, so something better can present, but those thoughts of revenge, those thoughts of anger, those thoughts of projections, those thoughts of wanting revenge, and all that fun stuff takes a toll on you. So you get into, I would say in this case, we rise up to the true integrity and true honesty within yourself. I work with a lot of dear ones that one moment they feel bliss off the planet. The next moment, I just want to check out. I just want to leave. I just want this to be over. But it's not about their life stream. It's about the ego suffering that they're wanting to be over. And, and when I really break it down, it comes back to things that are occurring that they don't want to occur, that they feel totally out of control, sometimes victimized by, 
and they just want to pull the plug. Now, that's an inner demon right there. It's kind of like, I just want out here. I want to escape. I've seen so many say, I just want to leave and become a walk-in on and on and on. Hey, more power to you. But if we all really step back and look at it for a moment, what is it that you are attempting to run from? So our inner demons are anything that's controlling us to act and react in a way that makes us feel heavy. We were talking about that I was feeling heavy, makes our vibratory levels slow down and are just causing us, controlling us to react and react. And it doesn't have to mean like our inner demons are entities or anything even like that, although they could, I guess they could be, right? Yeah, but that's not really about you. That's about you allowing an outside deity into your space. Okay, cool. And so you mentioned there can be, for most of us, just assuming that this is just the way we are. Yeah. When we're acting and reacting or if we're angry, if we're trying to be peaceful and then we lash out as angry, if we feel guilty, we identify that, oh, this must just be who I am. Now, can I change that around a little bit, Michael? Yes. Let's change it around to simplify it. Not about feeling guilt, but the experience of guilt. Hmm. There's a big distinction there. What is that distinction? To experience guilt is considered to be self-inflicted judgment that you're not enough. And that you've done something incorrect, not even with yourself so much, as much as you've done something incorrect in the eyes of others, whether it be the priest, the preacher, the rabbi, whether it be your mother, your father, on and on and on, and where you've perceived as though there was something wrong with you. Okay. Okay. And as you assist clients, at what point are they ready to face these items? Well, what happens, and this is where so many dear ones get confused, Michael, is that they read this book, whether they watched the movie The Secret, on and on and on. Now, they get more and more, let's just say, one part's beautiful, they become overjoyed, they feel powerful, blah, 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 or not feeling, but perceiving that they have all power through the conscious mind. Now, the conscious mind, yeah, we can look at changing our thoughts. We can look at trying to look at things differently. Which is, it all feels different, higher vibratorily speaking, that, you know, we could buy into that we're all creator, we're all this, that, in a bag of chips. That we have all power, which is important that you see and feel that you know you have power over your mind, your body, your world, and your exponential life. That's like the first step. Totally. Yeah. So we're waking up from... Assuming we're waking up from accepting. Now, you go beyond that for a moment, which is great. And we got to start somewhere. Everyone has to start somewhere. And they're waking up, their lights coming on, however we want to put it. Now, you start to look at why is my life the way that it is? Why is this continuing? to reoccur, reoccur. And even though we might change our cognitive conscious thought forms to 20% of the mind or 20% of the brain as well, to try to make it something positive. You see a car accident and someone left the planet. Well, at least they didn't suffer. So we shift our consciousness rather than looking at what's right in front of us, right? Right. Well, that's, you know, that's almost like the second step is you try to change your thoughts but your consciousness is isn't open enough to really embrace all of it exactly and so it's i've heard you say and i i like how you said this is 
we're trying to change our thoughts with our thoughts, and it's like a battle. Yeah, exactly. And any way you look at it, Michael, you can try to change your thoughts. You can try to make something perceivably negatively charged into um, positively charged, kind of like electricity. Now, they work together in unison, but let's all be clear, though. It's an awesome place, and congratulations for getting to that state. But then there's that part over here that says, well, hmm, okay, I've been changing my thoughts. I've been looking at things positively and on and on. But why is it that I continue to perceivably be victimized? Right. Why is it? Because this is where we get into, it's like a subtle, if from your subtle body levels of consciousness. If only if I'm good enough, only if I have happier thoughts, only if I X, Y, Z did, I can make it through the pearly gates and go into heaven and laugh with St. Peter or whatever, whatever. Now, that's all great. I mean, any way you look at it, it starts to bring the light into your very existence. So then kind of the third level is like, okay, I still have all these things that make me act and react the same exact way, even though I'm trying to think better thoughts. So is the next level, I'm ready to address them and move beyond them? Well, it's more about stepping back for a moment, which should come back to the impeccable honesty and impeccable integrity within and through yourself, which goes to... What is creating an action? What's creating a reaction? What is feeding these thoughts? Or what's feeding my action reactions, the emotions? What's feeding all of it or any of it? I can say, well, we just don't resonate, blah, blah, blah. That's a very literal, I really want everyone to hear me. That's a very literal cop-out based in judgment. Why would creator not be able to resonate with creator? That makes no sense at all. All has to do with creator judging the other creator of how they're going to fit or not into your very finite, very limited comfort zone. (laughs) Right. And we have taught that because, you know, there's plenty of uh, teachers out there saying, just move away from anything that's negative in your life. Yeah, and I find that interesting, Michael. I really do. All of us, we can call it light workers. We can call it whatever we want to call it. But then I watch so many, whether it be ashrams, whether it be healing centers, whether it be, whether it be, whether it be, it becomes almost almost like, okay, we're only going to have those of the highest of light being. We're only going to have those that resonate and we all agree. and on and on and on, create this awkward little compound. Now, the question always rises for me is, well, you know, what about everyone else? Because everyone is a facet of creator. Everything is a facet of creator. Every kingdom is a facet of creator. So what about all the other ones? I mean, we can go sit, we can all right now move to Sedona and watch it was like if we all moved to Sedona, Arizona would probably become the biggest sinkhole on the planet. <laughs> we can all go through California and the grids of light. And the chances are we are getting to California, you know, falling into the ocean because there's too much weight and all that other fun stuff. And I mean this with humor and jest. But then again, what about still the ones in Idaho, the ones in Nebraska, the ones in Nepal? The ones in Peru, what about blah, blah, blah? Not as another religion. It's about opening your heart to all that is. Now, the demons come back to what's going to happen? How is this going to affect me? And then how can I protect myself? And how can I create some sort of perception that I'm up here and others are down there? When we go into the other part of the inner demons of, Like I was mentioning earlier, the murderous thoughts, on and on and on, everyone's had them. Not that you're a serial killer or whatever. It's more like 
you're wanting to make your world a certain way. And then we get back to the falsivity of self-empowerment, that it's all about me. Well, now we start to supersede the me, 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 which was a falsivity within itself. It's a very conflicted, schizoaffective construct and conflict that everything is about you. And that's where it gets get really bizarre. But who is the me anyways? Except an inner, I'll call it an inner demon that, okay, now that I'm in power, everything's got to be about me. Everything I look at, I have created on and on, which is more about arrogance than it is about reality. On that point, I'm going to share that first step is, for me, was feeling my true presence, feeling my heart, and knowing that I was so much more than my thoughts, beliefs, and judgments, and identity. Then what occurred for me over many years is every time I was facing a demon, I was judging myself for having it, which is what you're saying, personalizing it. And it wasn't until I saw the whole picture that this is just, this has nothing to do with me. These are just demons that I've taken on. And so I can release them just as easily and uh, have no judgment about myself for doing it. If I'm not judging others for having their demons, why am I judging myself for having mine? Exactly. Because I want to discern between demons and the ego. So right now, let's just all ask ourselves, within your own impeccable honesty right now, within yourself, your own impeccable integrity within yourself, what perceivably keeps you ticking? What is that you perceivably perceive that you need? Is it a cigarette so you can feel more yourself? Is it alcohol? Is it drugs, psychiatric or narcotic? Is it a pop in a Xanax when you feel like you're in a tight situation? Is it vegetables? So as long as I eat vegetables, I can feel good and create a falsivity of my ego. But also, I can feel better about myself. If it's going to church and telling all your perceivable sins or whatever, confessions, if it's you know, getting baptized every week, so you're always purifying your soul, great, whatever, whatever. But I want us to all sit for a moment with ourselves. It could be as simple as warm salt water with lemon or warm water with lemon in the morning. It could be as simple as coffee in the morning or tea, on and on and on. All of the perceivable rituals. What is it really that's controlling you? Because let's say for a minute, let's challenge ourselves. I used to give this exercise to the mastery programs, which is changing and dissolving, becoming aware of, then dissolving all patterns, frequencies, tones, and really, really coming to terms with what is really controlling you, affecting you, even from the subtle bodies, the emotional bodies, but also the pain bodies as well. So you get up, you have a cup of coffee. Well, what would happen if we decided to skip that cup of coffee. We go to work, we go this way, drive this way, that way, or the other way, hop in the carpool lane. Well, what if we did things different a little bit? What if we just went on the regular highway or took a whole different direction on our way to work? We may leave work, go to the grocery store, go home, or go to the pub, whatever it may be. But what if for a minute, we just take a different direction? So we go, we get off work, we go, let's say, have a go to Starbucks or Tim Hortons, whatever it may be for you. Go to the park and sit for five minutes. Something to start breaking up the monotony and the patterns. If we always do this, we always do that and always do that and always agree. Let's mix it up a little bit. So if I get up in the morning, rather than having my coffee or tea, I'm going to take a shower first. Or if I get up and already take a shower, great. I'll get up and have my coffee before a shower. If it's lunch hour and we go out and blah, 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 well, stop for a minute, even asking ourselves, are we even hungry or 
what if we go for a walk rather than to a cafe or a bistro or whatever? You know, things that we start doing to create an interrupt of all the perceivable patterns where all the inner demons like, okay, well, Michael, you're this, you're that. And Michael, you should be at this, you should be at that. Michael, things should be this way, that way, or the other way. Well, what if we just go ahead, we create those interrupts that bring all of that stuff up to the forefront to where you can actually see and experience the freedom, but also the truth of yourself. And William, when we're watching our actions and reactions, uh, let's say throughout our day or at work, and we're noticing that we are getting frustrated by the patterns of a coworker. Okay, so now we're seeing that we have an inner demon. And how do you assist people in facing it and moving beyond it? I would have them for a moment honor what's going on. You're frustrated to coworkers doing or not doing X, Y, Z. I would encourage you not to have a murderous thought, but from there, or at least not acting on it. And then I would have you take a step back, take a breath. I would even have you close your eyes, focus your eyes towards your third eye, connecting with your heart right now. From the heart, back up to the mind. So from the heart, through the throat, back up through the pineal and pituitary glands, the third eye, front, middle, and back, the frontal lobe of the brain, midbrain, back of the brain, and the right left sides of the brain. And I have you ask yourself, what is it when, why, and where did I decide that this was a threat? Now. It's interesting. It's one of those questions that, look, is their behavior, even with raising children, is their behavior going to harm them or another? No. So let's just take a breath and let's ask ourselves, okay, when did I decide that this was derogatory or incorrect? And I want you to really take a breath with me for a minute. When did I decide? But then... I want you to go deeper to where you can start to hear, see, get glimpses. Maybe it was when your father or a sibling or kids on the playground, they started telling you, this is how it works. It's how it's going to be. It's how it should be, how it must be, on and on and on. So once you really become a privy to that internalized dialogue that's still been taking place within yourself, Because guys and ladies, this is all about your freedom. So now we're exposing that undercurrent, subtle voice from the sub-psyche, but also your subtle bodies, your pain bodies, your emotional bodies, that is sharing with you, the sirens go on, that this equals danger. Now, I want you to listen to that dialogue, that conversation. Maybe it is an overbearing masculine or feminine voice. It's not about the male or the female. It's not even so much about a mom or a dad. It's about the repetitive situation in dialogue that says, Michael or Will, this is not good. Or Michael or Will, you should feel ashamed. Michael or Will, it's got to be this way, that way, not the other way. All this stuff, when we started feeding these demons of misperception within yourself, to have you start to perceive there's something wrong with you. It led us all through survival of the fittest, uh, fight and flight, to let us all to have to perceive and have to control our environment and everyone in it so you could perceive, not even really you technically, but the whole ideal that this right here equals my safety from a very little me. I'm using demons. It's not like pitchforks and horns and all that. It's the things that plague you that are derogatorily affecting you, your life, and your exponential world of creation and manifestation. This is where we get back to being honest with ourselves. Right. This is where we're, we're sitting here saying, 
this is a time that it started. I see the rep repetition of this pattern controlling me, my actions and reactions. And the next step is, am I willing to accept this? Am I willing to accept this and or or what? Or where can we go from there? Yeah, am I willing to accept this? And do I find this to be the truth of myself? Because one is projective. One is internalized. But now we come back to, if you really want to get into empowerment, now we get back into taking our power back. Because we're feeling our true self now. Yeah. So we know that it's not a thought that we have this power. It's a knowing. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny. I use examples like, okay, let's all of us sit down and watch the news, specifically political news. And so many of your ones are divided within parties, identities, blah, 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 for whatever reason. Let's ask ourselves, do we find your representatives or the behavioral manners of others, do you find it to be appeasing, pleasing, or derogatory? Now we come back to ourselves because there's two kingdoms on this planet. A kingdom where you want someone or something to tell you what to do, when to do, how to do your whole life. So now, and we'll call it perceivable mass collective reality, whatever, whatever. And then there's the other group that says, hey, we all make our own decisions. That's the second kingdom, that we all have our free will. We all have the ability to look, feel, connect, but also literally deciding for ourselves of what you specifically find true about whatever else, everything else is going on around. Now, many dear ones, they want someone to tell them what to do because it's, it's kind of a catchphrase because they want someone to tell them what to do, how to be, when to be, blah, 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 so they don't have to take any responsibility for their own lives. The other kingdom is about total responsibility. It doesn't matter if I'm being told what to do or not. How do I feel about it? And I'm going to take responsibility for my own action, words, and deeds. Not about what's going on around. Not about what's playing out over there, over there, over there, over there. That's not my responsibility. It becomes an issue when I get into action reaction. But what about fluidity where we can start to becoming more and more true to yourself, true to who you are, true to your heart, rather than all the mental and then projected assumatory actions and reactions, which are those demons that we're talking about that have been running your action words and deeds. Someone cut you off in traffic. The first thing you do without even a contemplation is the international salute or hitting the, the horn. Huh, that's kind of bizarre. And the part I find interesting is even when it doesn't bother you, it's an undercurrent reaction, you know, giving them the international salute to where it's like, that's what I'm, quote, supposed to do. Before you catch yourself, how do I really feel about this? Do, does it really matter? I mean, hey, I'm not, I don't own a lane and neither do they, but you <laughs> must be in more of a hurry than I am. It is kind of cool because that difference right there is where you don't internalize. Wonderful, William. Thank you so much for, number one, the clarity about our demons, our inner demons, how to face them, and then walking us through different scenarios of coming to what's true for us. What are we going to allow control us? And the clarity of our true essence and our true power in light beingness is the part of us that can shine through and choose not to be controlled. Exactly. Going back to the whole traffic thing, I mean, what is the undercurrent, uh, in this case, I'll call it demon, that puts you into an automatic reaction? What's feeding that? Was it when you came home with a lower score in your test or that your parents or whoever gave you a hard time about? The terminology made me feel stupid. Well, no one has that power. Okay. <laughs> but they 
at times play you down and jump onto your case, blah, blah, blah. Is that what's really fueling the undercurrent autonomic reaction to what's playing out around you? Like being cut off in traffic. Yeah. Now, I want all of us to think our inner demons. I want all of us to feel gratitude for them. They've all been there trying to keep you safe. So let's not create a double negative, a double judgment about the demon, then judging the demon for what? It's not an outside deity. It's been trying to protect you in a body on a planet. Now, let's thank it. Let's show love. Let's show gratitude. Because once we do that, we can even, I would even encourage you to look for the benefit of having it. Once you find a benefit, mark my words, you're free. And it no longer has power. It went from like these steel iron walls to now being like a fluffy daisy or something. So, so from here, it's pretty awesome, right? It's very awesome. Very, very awesome. No, we thank it. We bless it. But still, it all equals to you integrating and understanding yourself and why you do what you do with so much more clarity and further. Well, thank you for sharing all that clarity and wisdom with us, William. And thank you all for joining us. This is The Relevance of Now with William Linville. Join us next time. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.